Hey, it's Super Legends, Superheroes, and Superstars. My name is Michael Kane. No, it's not. It's Dr. Dre, but without the Dr. Pop. You are tuned in to Hot High, which is the number one place if you're looking to move forward faster in your job search. So today, boom, I've got a special guest. This is the first person that's been invited back. And do you know why? Because last time she was here, she blew it up. And it's been the most popular episode on YouTube, Spotify, Apple and all the other podcast platforms. I absolutely love this woman's bit. She's such a ray of sunshine. She's so positive and I'm really excited what she's been doing in like, the last few months. So hopefully she's going to share that with us today. So I just want to say a huge, massive welcome to Stephanie Dominum. Woo! Yes. What a wonderful intro. Thank you so much, Dre. It is fantastic to be back here. Um, I've had such a great time filming the first one and sharing that with my friends and family. So really looking forward to chatting with you today. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. So last time you were here, you were just dropping gold, like some absolute fire. And your dad joke, I will never forget that. So I've been I've been stealing that one. <laughs> so yeah, tell us what have you yeah, what have you been up to for like the last, you know, three, four months? Oh my gosh, it's been a whirlwind, really. Like, I'm just thrilled with how everything is falling into place. Um, so as you know, I had my health and wellness business that I started up. Um, I had my first client come on board and he's absolutely smashing it, okay? Like, it's made a totally 180 flip in his life. He's just really engaged with the present moment, you know, just out in the sunshine, making the most of life. And of course, like the physical transformation has been phenomenal. So he's got his 30 day weigh in today. And um, I just can't wait to hear about, you know, how far he's come. Yeah. Congratulations, right. Daniel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, as well, too, I've been, you know, keeping up with the crypto and the Forex, now trying to navigate my way into learning a bit more about stocks. So let's just keep growing that financial literacy, especially for young females. I think we really need to take control of our finances and start planning for our future because it's going to come around a lot faster than we think. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And are you, have you got into coaching? Is that... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So just yesterday, I had my first two coaching sessions. First two I've had in a long time. And they went really well. I just got to speak with these two amazing women. And they've got all this experience from all walks of life, but they just need a little bit more accountability. And they need some direction on how to break these massive goals that they have into smaller pieces so that they can work towards them. So I'm really hoping that they stay on board and we can create this three to six month plan and I can help them crush the goals. Yeah, that's um, that's awesome. You are, you, I know that you're going to be like an amazing coach, definitely. All right, so what, what tips do you have for us today? Well, I was thinking that we could talk about uh, how to best prepare for an interview because, you know, with everything going on in the world right now, I think a lot of people are considering what they could do to enhance their life professionally. And a large part of that is making sure that you're in the right role that's going to be reflective of your passions, as well as matching up with your expertise. So um, I thought that we could just walk through best ways to prepare for interviews. Do you know what? I love interviews, like with the job search process, that's my favorite bit and i'm not sure if you know i wrote i've written a book on it as well so that is oh yeah man I'm congratulations yeah. i saw that that's so yeah. epic <laughs> yeah. all right yeah let's do it let's do it what have you got what have you Jump got in. sure yeah so i was saying thinking um back to the last time that i applied for a job and um i, I made a little bit of notes and i realized that the most important thing you want to do is be prepared okay and that divides into a few different subsections. So the first thing obviously you wanna do when you're applying for a new role is research, okay? And this is like three or four days at least before the interview, sit down and learn as much as you can about this job. And you can do that in a variety of ways. You can go on LinkedIn and look at people who are currently in the role, take a look through their job description, you know, maybe even send them a message if you feel comfortable. It might be a bit out of your comfort zone, but you know, just that's where the magic happens anyway. So um, just try to learn as much as you can about the role to be able to talk about uh, talk about it coherently. That was ironic <laughs> during the interview process um, and learn about the company. 
So you can do that through Wikipedia, you can go on the website, go on their LinkedIn page, and that's also going to be helpful to let you um, get a jump into the world and see what the culture's like. A, a lot of these businesses now are using LinkedIn to post photos of the actual team, you know, not just marketing and sales documentation, right? So if you can see what the team looks like, you know, get an idea, like, is this going to be a place where you're going to feel like you fit in, right? Culture is so important, you know, you're spending 50, 60 hours a week at work, you want to make sure that this is going to feel like home to you. And along with that note, right, is um, giving yourself a whole lot of extra time to get to the actual office, or if it's not an office you're applying in, to the location. Um, so, you know, consider, is, is this easy for me to get to every day, right? You don't want to be doing bus, train, plane just to get to work, <laughs> right? Um, you know, and, and when you, right, imagine like, you know, a, a long commute, I think, is good for certain reasons because you can, you know, pop in your headphones, listen to a great audible or, you know, maybe a, a funny podcast, right? But it needs to be feasible. Um, and then as well, too, when you arrive there, take a look around. Like, are there, you know, amenities? Is there a park nearby? Um, you know, when you walk into the building, what's the, the feeling that you get, right? Do people seem friendly? Can you picture yourself coming here every day? Um, and then as well, too, when you arrive in the office, um, hopefully you've got about 10 or 15 minutes of buffer time. Don't just sit in the chair and look on your phone, you know, be engaged. Walk up to the receptionist, ask her how her day is going, you know, and ask her, you know, what's it like working here? Are you loving it? Right? Because when you leave that office, it's not just the interviewer who's going to be tallying up your score. They're going to be chatting with the other people that you've interacted with. So definitely something to keep in mind, I'd say. Yeah, I love that. So just on, yeah, just on top of that. So I love what you're saying about researching like the company, like the people, like the team. And because, yeah, I feel that you should absolutely stalk them. So you want to know as much as possible. So when you're, in, say, in that interview, it's just finding that common interest, building that rapport, know, like, and trust. So absolute, absolute gold. So I love those. And um, also, so I just thought of something as well. And also, like, when you're, say, when you're walking into that office, you're saying hello to, like, the receptionist. You can also, like, have a look around to see if there's, you know, like, maybe some awards that are on, on the wall. And that's just a great conversation start. You know, when did you win that award? What was that award for? And it's, um, yeah, it just adds to the uh, value yeah. as well. Yeah. People love talking about their accomplishments, right? So yeah. if you could be in a business that's got this amazing reputation in the market as, as being an industry leader, right? That's just showing you and showing them how engaged you are and how um, excited you are at the potential of working for this business, right? That's going to be something that's going to come up in conversation. They're going to ask you, why do you want to work here? So hopefully you've done enough research about the position, the company, and just what you can see in the office to be able to talk about that at length. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on as well, too, is what you wear. Okay, this is really important. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so for the ladies, you know, try not to go too crazy with makeup. You know, I always say as well, too, for the clothes, something my mom taught me growing up. She's like, if you wouldn't wear it at church, do not wear it to work. <laughs> and I love for that. Yeah. For the men, um, this is a bit tricky, right? So if you're applying for a really, you know, corporate executive job, I would say, you know, try to put on like a nice fresh tailored suit or maybe just a dress shirt with a tie. But if it's more of a advertising agency vibe and, you know, if you look on, on their website and you can see some of their employees, you know, they're dressed in like Converse and a t-shirt, you still want to be dressed a little bit more formal because it's a it's a formal process to be in an interview. Um, but don't be too overdressed because then that might be a signal to the interviewer that you might not be the right fit for the culture. Um, so be very mindful of what you're wearing. And remember, people are not going to remember you for what you wore. They're going to remember for what you remember you for what you said and how you made them feel. Right. So definitely stay true to yourself when you're thinking of your outfit, but um, make sure that you're putting more focus into things that you're going to convey and say through your body language. And, you know, just when you're um, going through your CV and, and describing past um, roles that you had. And that is absolute gold. Yeah. Cause you don't want to be like a corporate guy like wearing like a, like a suit and then going onto a construction site because you will be laughed at and then we'll kick you off as well. <laughs> so um, I always say, yep, yeah, 
dress like 20% better than what the industry expects. So that means you're not being like over the top and it, you're just being standing out above everybody else as well. So that's um, absolute gold. Yeah, you all look smart, you all look sharp, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice and clean, smell good, like all these yeah. things. Basically like, <laughs> like going on a date, right? You want to dress to impress, um, but you don't want to go overboard where these people are thinking, wow, you know, they've got some kind of personality and it. it's not exactly the right match for us, right? So yeah, definitely let your, your beauty shine, but try to um, focus more on the content, right? What you're saying and how you are a great match for this specific role. What are your qualifications? The interviewer is gonna ask you, you know, tell me a bit about yourself. And you're gonna think, wow, they, they like me as a person. They wanna know what I do in my day to day, but try to make your response tailored to the role itself, right? And you wanna use power words. You wanna talk about how dedicated you are, you know, um, try to stay away from things like, great or very good you know you know before you go in have a flip through a thesaurus you know? <laughs> <laughs> some, um, so you maybe you stand out like you're resilient you know you're a problem solver um you know you're in innovative just think about ways that you can bring value to the role and the way that you're gonna really stitch this team together and create more efficiency like you want this interviewer, this hiring manager to think, wow, this person's going to come in and really shake things up, but in a way that's going to make my life easier. They're going to save me time. They're going to save me stress. You want to make them believe that you are the answer to all their problems. Like yes, really absolutely. sell yourself. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's all about yeah communicating your value and articulating your skills, your knowledge, your experience and your achievements, but also letting your personality shine through as well. Yeah. absolute gold absolute gold yeah be very mindful of your body language as well too you know sit up straight that's mm -hmm. going to show that you're confident you're not you're not in there nervous all closed up right like be be confident like let that really shine through the way that you're nodding and smiling as they're chatting it shows you're actively listening right and that you're not just thinking about your next response you know all worried in your head right because sometimes you can overthink and that gives you a bit of like analysis paralysis like just be in the moment this is a one-to-one -one conversation and they're not this you know huge like deciding factor of your fate like you get to decide just as much if this role is right for you right so one of the huge huge things that I tell everyone before they go into an interview is pre prepare some questions like you want to know what is the day-to-day -day life like in this role? What are the systems that you use? Have I used them before? Is it a bit of Salesforce, a bit of Rike, a bit of outreach? There's so many different systems and you want to have a good idea about, you know, what's the upskilling going to be like? What, you know, is, is this going to be like a whole dive in the deep end or are you going to be able to really um, fulfill the needs of this role quite quickly? Um, I think it's, it's so important to prepare questions, um, not just about, the role itself but then asking you know what what could the future potentially look like i think this indicates to the interviewer that you're thinking long term like you're not just looking for a role to get paid and in a few months after they've invested all this training into you you're going to go off to the next business ask them at the end of the interview when they ask you if you have any questions you know is there potential for internal progression you know i really want to build my career in xyz whatever industry that you're applying in um and then you can also take it one step further and a bit more personal and ask the interviewer themselves like you know what made you want to work here how's your experience been and you know what's one thing you're really proud of from the last six months and what's one of the challenges that you face right that really shows to them that you have prepared and that you are seriously considering this role as as something that could be a more permanent fixture in your life Okay, all right. I'm just I'm a little bit worried now. So I just want to find out: Are you going to be an empowerment coach, or are you going to be like a career coach? Do I have to? <laughs> do, I, do I have to watch out? Or? Dream team, dream team. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is your domain. I'm just here to add a bit of fluff and a bit of spice. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, absolute fire. All right. So, what do you have going on at the moment? What's What's next for you? So, wow, lots going on. Um, well, thanks to this little, <laughs> you probably saw <laughs> popping up <laughs> this little injury. Um, unfortunately, basketball has had to take a back seat, but 
look, life happens for us, not to us. So I think right. this is the way of the universe telling me to slow down a little bit. And I think I'm going to switch gears to dancing. Um, and I've always, always loved hip hop dancing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a bit of samba. Who knows, right? It's just, look, life is made to have fun. Let's try to make a bit more time for some joy and some silliness. Um, and besides that, on a professional level, like really want to look into NLP, as we were discussing before, so I can make the most out of this, um, setting the foundation for this coaching business. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. And, and with my health and wellness, as you know, you know, trying to help people just really take control of their lives and, and live in the bodies that we're meant to, you know, our bodies are these amazing feats of nature. And I think when we fuel them in the right way, you can just, you can just smash personal best like none other, like inside and out of the gym. I just every day try to be 1% better. And the way that I'm feeling my body has had a huge impact on that. Yeah, just on that. So can you tell me like your morning, are you a morning person or are you an evening person? You know what? Before I moved to Australia, I was yeah. definitely, definitely a night owl. But since this lifestyle in the city, I mean, the sun is shining, you know, I'm right by the beach here. So I've definitely become a morning person. I'm trying my best to become a 6 a.m. person. <laughs> yeah. Because you know what? The other day, I woke up at 5.30 a.m. for a coaching session and went to the gym, um, had a PT session and got my groceries done. And this was all before starting work at 9 a.m. I felt like a million oh. bucks. So if I could do that more regularly and I can help other people feel inspired to do that, that would just bring me so much happiness. Brilliant. And how do people get hold of you? What's the best way? Oh, well, you can definitely check me out on Instagram. Just recently changed the handle. So it's at Steph Darmanin. Okay. You'll see it on the screen. Um, yeah. That's the best way. You can find me on LinkedIn. Dre and I tag each other all the time. So it's very easy to find me. The name is the same. And before we go, I do also want to say one last thing about the interview prep. After everything is all said and done, make sure you thank them before you leave the office. And within 24 hours, please, please send them an email again, thanking them for their time and say that you can't wait um, to hear their feedback and you look forward to potentially working together. You know, everybody loves gratitude. Everyone loves receiving thanks. The more you can say thank you every single day, the more you're going to be a magnet for miracles. Trust me on that. Steph, that is such a great tip because there's so many people that will go to an interview and then they don't follow, they don't send a follow-up email to, to say thank you for your, for your time and giving me the opportunity. So that is oh, gold, absolute gold. All right, Steph, it is about that time, my favourite time. All right. <laughs> Do you have a dad joke for us to finish on? I do, I do. It's kind of cheesy as they are, but <laughs> I was just wondering if you if you wanted to hear a joke about construction. <laughs> oh no. Oh. no! Actually, never mind. Never mind. I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay, that one was lame. I'll give you another one. I'll give you okay. another. One. All right. What did the drummer call his twin daughters? Okay. <laughs> I and don't know. One, and a two. <laughs> but I'm oh, so corny, but that's why we love dad jokes, right? <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah. So yeah, the funny thing is, like, I'm absolutely I'm obsessed with dad jokes, and I'm, I'm not a dad, which is probably a little bit strange. But um, yeah, when I do, my kids are going to be in for a treat, absolute treat. So Steph, I just want to say a massive, huge thank you for once again coming back on, dropping knowledge bombs and absolute gold. So, so much value. Really appreciate you. Anytime, always a pleasure. And anyone thinking, should I work with Dre? What would that be like? This is the most hardworking, consistent, amazing guy. Like, Everything get said, yes. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> he will totally ramp up your interview prep, your resumes, like just get in touch. You've got nothing to lose. He is the man. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right. Boom. All right. It's a wrap. <laughs>